but uh, today, uh, oh, I want to share a quick testimony right quick. I'm not going to be long. No, I'm going to share a quick testimony about uh, the salt. If we all passed through, mm -hmm. we should be all been on the salt, right? Yeah, been on the salt. And so uh, the Lord told me, he, when he gave me the message, even today as I share with you, the Lord is telling me this. This is what he's telling me, and I just come to share it with you. He is ministering me and telling me, showing me areas in my life that I need to, you know, you know, he want to use me in certain areas. He want to do certain things to me. So I just share what he tells me, because he told me spiritual shoes are one size fit all. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, if you go through it, somebody else can use it too. Mm -hmm. And so he ministered me and told me that I was the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. And told me that I should make a difference in the earth. Mm -hmm. And in one Bible, the, the good news Bible said, ye are, ye are like the salt of the earth to mankind. <clears throat> and so I had heard a while back that uh, uh, a few months ago, that my landlord was going through depression, but you know when somebody tells you stuff like that, you just don't really pay any attention. Right, right. And so, um, and, and then I thought, my thing was that he was such a Trump fanatic. Uh, he, and I thought he went into depression because Trump lost. You know, that's what I was saying. Uh -huh. And so, uh, one day I saw him, and I looked at him, and I'm like, oh my goodness, he is depressed. He looked so bad. He always told me, he said, I'm so depressed. And he told me he's on medication and he had an anxiety attack. And I looked at him, he had lost so much weight. And then you know how you lose a lot of weight? And this man had, had some money. Yeah. Money, money. Mm -hmm. He bought property all over the place and, you know, money. And he, um, how you lose a lot of weight, you just put a belt on and it's all gathered up around the waist. And I looked at him, I said, you need to bring your clothes here and let me off you them. And he looked like it looked like he had combed his hair and I don't know when it's going long and hanging all over his face. I'm like, oh my God, this man is going, really going through depression. And he kept, he told me he was. He told me, I'm depressed, I'm having anxiety, I'm on medication, blah, blah, blah. And so one Monday, I have sewing classes. So one Monday, I decided I don't want to be bothered with my students. I don't want to do no sewing classes. They don't feel like I'm feeling it. So I called them and I canceled my sewing class. They said, okay. And so about a quarter till six, about 15 minutes before I'm about to close, uh, my landlord called me and he said, Cynthia, you forgot to sign the check. I have never done that, y'all. I've been in that spot right now this, this month, 20 years. And he said, you forgot to sign the check. And uh, he said, but you know, he, he said, are you still at work? I said, yes. And he said, well, I can be there in about 15 minutes if you can wait for me. I waited for him. I said, sure, no problem, I waited for him. And it wasn't about that check. Mm -hmm. God said it all. To be, for me to be the song. Yes. For me to shake on something. Oh, yeah. This man came in there, and I just began to, and he told me, oh, I'm so, I, I, I said, uh-uh. I said, you know what, there's power in your tongue. Yes. And I said, now, you can either sit here and die, or you can get up and live. Oh. So once I started ministering to him, he said, wait a minute. Went out to the car and brought his wife in. <laughs> I mean, okay. I ministered to him and his wife, not knowing his wife came in and she about to lose it too. Because her husband is about to lose it, so she's about to lose it. Finally, he lost a lot of money in the stock market. Holy mm. He don't want to live anymore. The, the wife told me why he was in there, the man had got a gun. Holy Ghost. And put it by his bed. This man was contemplating on killing himself. Holy Ghost. And she told him she just spilled it all out. And told how she about to go crazy shit. And so I ministered to him and I told him what to do. I said, you can either live or die. It's your choice. Yes. I said, you can get up and live. I said, you came in this world naked. You're going to leave naked. Yes. Yes. You didn't have nothing. And I said, you know what I went through when I lost my husband. And I said, you know how the devil. And I shared him. How, and see, when you've been through something, yes. and, and, oh my God. Yes. See, we can say what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Yes. But when you've been in the fire yes. first, yes. when you've been something, you saw the hand of God move in your life. So he asked me, how did the devil get in there? I said, okay, 
When you lost that money and you felt like you had lost everything, you opened the door wide for him to Open come in. Open up wide. Wide. That's real. You felt like you didn't have no hope. You opened the door wide. And you, you pretty much invited him in. Yes, you did. So, cause see, we have hope. Yes. And I said, the one thing I had with me, I had the word of God. Yes. I said, the word of God was my weapon. So instead of going to get a physical gun, though, that was my gun. Yes. Yeah. That was that was my weapon, and that's what I used to fight the enemy. Yeah. So that's why we need the word, and we can say it all we want to y'all can hear or not hear. You need to hear the word of God. Yeah. You need the word, and you are not gonna make it in these days without the word. You will not make it. Yeah. You will not, cause that's my weapon, Hallelujah. Yeah. That's your weapon. What did Jesus use when the devil tempted him? Yeah. The word of God. Not known my ways. Yes, 
So I swear in my rep, they shall not enter my rest.